This program was designed to develop your overall athleticism. We created Mind Body Fit to help women achieve all over wellness. You'll find tons of articles on nutrition, exercise, and even beauty. Shoulders define your upper body. Just add these two workouts into your split each week to build bigger and more defined delts. With my Kingmaker program, you'll build muscle and a special kind of mental toughness that can overcome any challenge. With MetaBurn 90, all you'll need is a few dumbbells in 30 minutes or less a day to burn fat and achieve peak fitness in a very short, concentrated amount of time. Everything is laid out for you in detail. For positive, you'll find unique pieces that will help you feel your best every single day. Control your world, but it all starts with you. Only at Bodybuilder.com, all access. What's up, everybody? Chris Gethin here, CEO of Cage Muscle in the bodybuilding.com HQ gym. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today is going to be a little bit different to my usual workouts. This is what I've been following for quite a while now as part of my cardio. So this is a circuit that has resistance weights. It elevates my heart rate, but I don't go to absolute muscular failure. I'll go to cardiovascular failure for sure, but not muscular fa failure. So I'm just gonna go through the circuits that I do quite a few times a week, maybe anywhere between three and five times a week, I'll do a circuit and it changes all the time. But today, what we're gonna do is hexagon deadlifts. Hexagon deadlifts, perfect for targeting the legs, the quads, the back, the upper back, the traps. It's an overall good workout, gets a lot of calorie burn up. Then we're gonna go into the hex, gar, hex bar push-up. So I'll be holding onto this hex can bar, going very, very slow, and doing it on a hex can bar requires more core stability, so you'll find it quite a little bit harder because you're trying not to roll and you're trying not to allow that hex can bar from twisting or moving. Then I'm gonna do sit-ups with the hex can bar, so I'm gonna have my feet underneath the hex can bar on the end. What you'll notice is having your legs far apart makes it a lot harder for those sit-ups because you're not incorporating so much of your flexors, which become extremely strong over time from doing a lot of sit-ups. Then we're gonna go on to the kettlebells, starting with a kettlebell row. I'm gonna be doing one arm at a time. You'll notice how I'll do that through the demonstration. Then I'm gonna go into the kettlebell lunges, using the kettlebell as my resistance before going on to a kettlebell shoulder press. So the rows, the shoulder press, press will be unilateral and then I'm going to go into the close grip push-up to target the triceps and then the kettlebell curls to target the biceps. So we'll be targeting every single muscle group here, back, chest, legs, everything, biceps, triceps, you got it, shoulders. All right, so I'm gonna go into the circuit, straight into it, back to back to back to back. Then once I've done one circuit, I'm gonna stop, answer some of your questions, then I'm gonna go again. So before you give this a shot, take your pre-caged about 40 minutes before your workout, and then after every circuit, drink some of your in-cage to stay hydrated and stay pumped and focused. Are you ready to rock and roll? Yep, yep. All right, hexagon bar deadlifts. Now I'm gonna be knocking out about 10 repetitions on each one of these exercises. So I'm not going to complete muscular failure, but I'm gonna get that heart rate up. All right, let's hit it.
That is one circuit. Now this gets you extremely out of breath. One of the reasons being is that you're working a lot of your core stability. When you're doing the push-ups, when you're doing the deadlifts, particularly when you're doing the shoulder press, one arm at a time standing up, then obviously a unilateral curl, it really does target your core, which gets you out of breath as well, especially when you're doing a compound movement such as the deadlift and uh, the shoulder press. Yay. We have a ton of questions coming in. Um, a couple ones. What uh, The question on YouTube was, is this beginner level? I suppose, what level workout is this? Yeah, this is beginner to advance. It doesn't matter what level you are. You just take it to the intensity and the weight perfect for you. You don't have to go back to back to back to back. If you, need, if you require 20, 40 seconds rest in between each one of these exercises, Fine, take it to begin with, but then work on shortening that time, increasing in the intensity, and increasing the weight. But remember, this isn't like a full-on workout. I use this as my cardio sessions uh, for you know, three to five times a week. Another question from YouTube. Does cage muscle have any lactose-free proteins? Uh, well, we don't have completely lactose-free. We have less than one gram of lactose in our isolate, less than one gram in our recage, less than one gram in our casein. So we have a lot of people that have lactose intolerances. I'm not saying this for everybody though, but the majority of them are absolutely fine taking our products. Like I do not have dairy whatsoever, but I can take the isolates. Another question from YouTube. Hey Chris, how do those wraps on your wrists help you? Uh, these are Jim Reaper's wraps. I've broken my wrists and uh, I've torn the tendons in them. I used to race motocross. 
and I've got very thin joints, like I've torn the tendons in my ankles probably like seven or eight times now and broken my ankles too. So it helps with my stability, helps me kick my wrist straight, particularly when I'm pressing and stuff like that. And it's just extra support, you know, think of it as like wraps for your elbows or your knees. Uh, there's kind of two questions that merge together really nicely. Um, one is, hi Chris, I'm following your eight weeks hardcore uh, program. The results are really impressive and would like to keep what I achieved with it. Do you have any programs for maintenance? And there was another question that said, um, will this full body circuit help me gain muscle as well as burn fat? Would this be a maintenance, something you can do like once a week? How does this fit into a program? This be maintenance? Uh, yeah, you could do this several times a week. I'd say you wouldn't build muscle on it as such. You'd burn body fat, but I don't do these types of workouts just to build muscle. I require more intensity and focus into one or two muscle groups and completely break that down and allow that to recover and rebuild itself for muscle building. This is just really to, for fitness, for your heart muscle. You know, it'll build your heart, heart strength, but uh, mostly for fat burning as well. Uh, we're getting several questions from YouTube on uh, what that bar is. Does that bar make it easier on your lower back? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is a hexagon bar. Some people call it a trap bar. I actually want, have one at home in my garage. And uh, it's so much easier on your lower back. It puts more stress onto your hamstrings and glutes. So you do drive through your legs that much more. But, you know, it's good to do both. But if you do have any lower back problems that prevents you from doing a conventional deadlift, try the hex bar. Someone on YouTube doesn't believe that we're actually live right now. Oh, you don't believe that we're live right now? Why is that? Maybe someone can Instagram me at the same time so you can see it is live. Why wouldn't you think that? Haters. Uh, shout out on Facebook uh, from Don. Chris, you are the first and only trainer whose program I have followed and love your work, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, this is probably pretty obvious. What are your thoughts on pre-workouts? You mentioned uh, timing beforehand. You mm -hmm. said 40 minutes before. Well, it all depends what that pre-workout is, but I take pre-caged about 40 minutes before my workout. Like, I don't do well on normal caffeine. I do much better on organic caffeine because it doesn't give me any anxiety and I'm quite an anxious person. So I like that energy influx and I like the intensity of the focus that I get from it. And obviously, if I get a better blood flow, which I do from pre-caged, I'm gonna get a better mind-muscle connect connection so I can contract the muscle better. So, you know, there's a lot of people use pre-workouts just to get them jacked. I don't, I do it to prime my workouts about 40 minutes before. So guys, just, I've got a special for you guys that you should be aware of. If you haven't followed the bodybuilding.com Instagram account, you need to because you can see that they posted an awesome special for you guys. So we've got a giveaway. All right, a giveaway, some custom caged muscle beats headphones, okay? Custom caged muscle beats headphones. This is all you gotta do. You've gotta go to the post that bodybuilding.com put up, all right? You've gotta like that post. Obviously follow the bodybuilding.com Instagram, tag three of your mates or your workout buddies for a chance to win those custom beats. And you'll also get a load of cage muscle swag as well, so check it out, guys. I think one more question before we dive into that second circuit. Um, how important is breathing during a circuit workout like this? Extremely important. So I do something that's called like box breathing and Wim Hof breathing as well. I try to do it in between my sets. So that'll take me straight from my sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight, into my parasympathetic nervous system so I'm able to recover as, you know, as much as I possibly can. It's funny, we all assume we know how to breathe because we've been breathing our entire lives. But a lot of us don't, we breathe way too shallow. So I, I always try to, people, try to encourage people to breathe. Breathe, God damn it. All right, ready to go again. Sip on that in cage, ready to rock and roll. Whew. I might do a slight variation within a couple of these exercises of this circuit, so look closely. Let's go. 
be my hex bar ab exercise now, which will be a rollout. Oh. two circuits now. So you'll notice that I did some slight variation in there as opposed to alternating with my lunges, just doing one at a time. When I was doing the abs, instead of doing the sit-ups, I was doing the rollouts, and the rollouts are so difficult on that hexagon bar, but still targets the abs. Instead of doing a conventional row, I was doing an alternate upright row. So there's a lot of variation that you can throw in each one of these circuits just to mix things up a little bit, target other muscle groups, and keep it interesting. A bunch more questions rolling in. Um, this one is, uh, do you have any exercise recommendations for fasted cardio? And I would add, could you do this fasted? Yeah, you could do this fasted for sure. I do suggest though, I do what's called controlled fasting. So, I didn't fast this morning, but a lot of the time I'll do these circuits and sometimes my workouts 
but I'll have my fermented glutamine and my amino synergy, the non-caffeinated I, I personally have, and I'll mix those two together. So I'm maintaining my muscle protein synthesis and my glutamine stores in that controlled fasted state because I'm not fasting like a conventional person like what Dr. Sachin Panda or Jason Fung suggests. I'm a bodybuilder, I'm a hybrid athlete, so I need to fuel myself in such a way to prevent myself from wasting away. This question is from Gary on YouTube. Starting bodybuilding at 40, is it possible to get the muscle gains as a newbie at this age? Um, maybe not the same muscle gains as a 40 year old, as if you started at like 20 or 18 or something like that. But there's no reason why you can't get very, very good muscle gains at that age. You're still very young. What I just suggest is that you optimize your health, you get your blood work done, your hormone checks, do everything that you can to optimize your health through the suggestions of your physician or your functional practitioner to ensure that you are optimizing your recovery, your performance. Because I noticed that whenever I prioritized my health, which I started doing many years ago, everything fell into place. My recovery is so much better now than it was when I was in my 20s. And that's because I'm optimizing my recovery. I'm doing a lot of things in the kitchen and outside of the kitchen to help with that as well, you know. A question from Facebook. If you compare kettlebell workouts to dumbbell workouts, what is the main difference between the two, if any? Well, the kettlebells, you train with them quite differently. Um, obviously, I'm doing a curl. And because it's unstable, I find that I'm using a lot, lot more of my fixators, my assisting muscles there as well which isn't necessarily the best if you want to isolate your biceps. For, so for isolation movements, I suggest that you do the dumbbells. If you really want to burn, you know, build up the peaks of your biceps or your delts or anything like that. However, if you want an overall functional workout, which works your assisting muscles, which I believe help with injury prevention anyway, then do them both, mix it up. Lots of shout outs. Uh, this one from Hymir. Chris, you are the one who got me started with your muscle building programs on bodybuilding.com. Thank you so much for all your help. Greetings from Iceland. From Iceland. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, another question from Facebook. What do you do for recovery? For recovery? Wow, I do a lot of things. Well, as soon as this workout is done, I'm going to have my recaged, which is my post-workout formula, because remember, your recovery is going to dictate your performance for the next day. So I'm always thinking about the next day's workout, so I'll recover with that. Of course, I'm staying as hydrated as I possibly can, within reason. Sleep, I have to, have to optimize my sleep. So you'll notice that I'm wearing some blue light blocking glasses at the moment. It, these yellow ones do not block out all the blue light, just some of it, because some of it's good during the day. I just wear them like under artificial light because I want to release melatonin when I go to sleep, which is obviously going to optimize my recovery as well. So try to stay away from artificial light for a couple of hours before bed, your devices so you can sleep and uh, just make sure that you try to meditate every now and again just to ensure that you're not in a constant sympathetic state where you can't recover and your cortisol levels are high. That's great. It also answers, we had a couple of questions on YouTube about how consistent are you in your training, nutrition and sleep? That's consistent. It, it, that is my day. That is my day. I work obviously, but I prioritize my health because I can't take any materialistic possessions with me, so I, but I, I can optimize my health because I don't want to hate life when I'm 90. That's a, one interesting question before we jump into that third circuit. Do you ever do exercises to train your neck? I actually do. It's not weird. I'm weird. <laughs> yeah, I actually, um, I actually have like, um, God, what do you call it? It's like a neck sling where you put weights on it and I will bring my neck back like that. And then I got uh, something called an iron neck. You may have seen Joe Rogan wearing it, so I've got one of those as well. So, for instance, yesterday in my garage, I was doing some ab rollouts with the ab wheel with this iron neck on my head. It's like a halo, all right? And you have a resistance band, which I have fixed to the wall. So every time I'm rolling out, it was put in tension on my neck. If you know Henry Rollins, I want a neck like him. All right, ready to go again. All right, third circuit. Let me see if I can put in some variation in this bad boy too. Remember, before I get into this, I am giving away some custom caged muscle beats headphones. These are custom. You cannot buy these. This one is only going to be given away. All you've got to do is go on to the post that bodybuilding.com put up yesterday. You'll see it there with the clear, clear and the headphones. 
tag three of your buddies, your mates, your workout friends, okay? Tag three of them, follow the bodybuilding.com, all right? Like the post and you could be in a chance for winning. All right, ready rock and roll? Let's smash this bad boy out. three circuits again as you can see I mixed up the variation there a little bit oh head rush so again I'm targeting other muscle groups I'm keeping my heart rate up through that entire circuit and usually while I'm talking to you now I'll just be taking deep breaths eyes closed taking myself back into that parasympathetic nervous system so I can totally recover trying to control my vagal nerve and then psych myself up to go all out and intense again for the next circuit, you know? So let me answer your questions, kids. Uh, we got a bunch of them. Uh, one from YouTube, you were an inspiration to all of us. 
I would like to know your thoughts on creatine and creatine loading. Okay, yeah, I've never been into the creatine loading. I know that was big back in the day with Bill Phillips when he uh, brought phosphagen to EAS supplements. Uh, however, now we know, studies show that it doesn't matter if you load it or if you take a maintenance dose because at the 28 day period, you'll still have that same creatine saturation. I like to take creatine all year round. So I do not load, I take it every single day as a maintenance dose. Are you working, this is a question from Facebook, are you working on another book? On another book, no, I just released obviously Man of Iron this year. So uh, not working on another one at the moment, I've got seven books out now, so I think they'll, they'll be it for a while unless I have a demand for one in particular. Uh, we've had a couple of questions on what you're drinking, and then there's another question on YouTube that uh, asks, how often should we drink water or aminos during a workout? Okay, so I drink, right, what I'm drinking now is the same as what I drink during every single workout, and that's in-caged, okay? So in-caged is an intra-workout formula that has citrulline, that has branched-chain amino acids, that has coconut water, so electrolytes to stay hydrated. When I work with my clients, a lot of the time if their performance is down, it's not because of their nutrition or maybe they're lacking in sleep, it's usually because of hydration. So I want to ensure that the hydration has the key ingredients needed to perform. So uh, what, was there another question in that or not? No, how often should I drink it? Just take little sips throughout your workout in between your sets. What I usually like to do is completely finish my in-cage before my last exercise. So I'm completely saturated. So I want to always finish my workouts as strong as I've begun. And a lot of people finish a lot weaker than they've begun, and I never want that to happen to me. Um, since it's a full body workout, would you do this every day? Could you work this into your program? You mentioned you could do this a couple of times a week. Could you do this while you're doing a muscle building program? Sure, like I, I do it three to five times a week, but it's all gonna come down to your recovery. Like my recovery is perfect. Like I quantify it, I check my heart rate variability every morning. If my heart rate variability is tanked, then I won't do this circuit. I'll go out for a, a walk, a power walk out in the sun or something like that, or I'll do a swim, steady state cardio. However, if my heart rate variability is good, yeah, I'll come and smash it on this. But as you can see, I'm not going to muscular failure, so I'm not stressing my central nervous system. Uh, here's a question from YouTube, Mr. Gethin. Mr. Gethin, is please, my dad here? <laughs> please share your tips for better joint health. Thank better you. joint health. Okay, well you should warm up, and that's one thing that I didn't mention. So warm up before you do the circuit, maybe five minutes on a bike or treadmill, and maybe a couple of lighter sets. But for joint health, I make sure, you know, I make sure that I get plenty of good healthy fats, lots of EPAs, DHAs, in my omega-3 fatty acids. Um, I, I make sure that obviously, like I said, that I warm up uh, within all my exercises and stress, uh, stretch a little bit. And uh, I found that has pretty, been pretty good. I do try to get plenty of sunlight as well. So I want my vitamin D production and my magnesium absorption. So I find sunlight helps as well, weirdly enough. And last question, where can people find you? You can all find me on Instagram, K-R-I-S, Gethin, G-E-T-H-I-N. You can find me there. You can hassle me. You can see me putting up weird stuff every now and again. And uh, pretty much everywhere online under Chris Gethin, except for Twitter, it's Caged Muscle, K-A-G-E-D, Muscle, and obviously our supplements you can find on bodybuilding.com as well. And if you want to win some custom Beats headphones from Caged Muscle, okay, bodybuilding.com and I have paired up for this major giveaway, all right? So what you gotta do is follow bodybuilding.com and Caged Muscle, like us, Follow us, obviously, and tag three buddies on the post that you'll see the creatine there and the headphones, okay? And you could be that winner. And you'll also, also get some Cage Muscle swag. Forgot to mention that in. I may, not, I may or may not be in that box, too. All right, we're it. We are out. So I'm going to have my re-cage now to recover, because guess what? i got to go and smash legs later, and I've got to be back in the gym tomorrow. So peace out. Thank you very much for joining me.